from the dust of my straw bed kept my eyes shut for a minute after I heard the cannon fire. I ran rapidly from my bed to the tiny wardrobe in the corner of my attic hideaway and hid. As much as I tried to be brave like a good boy should, I couldn't keep from shaking. It was just before dawn, August 27, 1776. My life had been topsy-turvy since the Patriots declared independence from King George. My name is Zebulon Hale. I live in Long Island, New York, and I'm 10 years old. My father is Nathan Hale, a town schoolmaster. My father doesn't know what... My father doesn't know that I watched him and that, and that soldier when they had their talks. I don't know who he is, but he must be important. His coat has shiny brass buttons and fancy epaulets on his shoulders. His horse is a fine English thoroughbred. This morning, the sound of cannons is louder than normal. I am worried something bad is going to happen today. I must be brave, though, and carry on. I have chores to do. After that, I have to go to Father's school and help him with his students. His assistant joins George Washington's army. I live on a small farm just outside of town. We have horses, chickens, turkeys, and a vegetable garden. I take care of the animals. My sister, Anna, tends the garden. The animals are skittish this morning. I'm not surprised. So am I. I'm, I patted the young colt on his neck and spoke softly to him to calm him. Only two weeks ago, he was taken from his mother. He is only three. Now he must be trained and become a patriot, just like the rest of we colonists. I fed the rest of the animals and headed down to the small schoolhouse. I ran into my friend Oneidas. He was selling baskets in the market square. I felt sad for him. Most of his tribe, the Manhattan, had been killed or run out. His mother and father died of smallpox last year. His mother taught him to make baskets. He should be a war warrior like the other Indian boys of another time. My father was already at the schoolhouse when I arrived preparing his lessons. He told me to stay inside today. This was unusual. I knew it had something to do with the frequency of the distant cannon fire. He tried to act normally, but I could see he was worried. He had beads of sweat on his brow. He gave me some papers to grade. Nursery rhymes the young ones had been copying to learn to write. This helped me forget my fear of it. After grading, I can continue reading Robson Castle. Just as I was beginning to calm down, the important soldier burst through the door and ordered the children downstairs. My father told us to remain calm and guard onto the root cellar. I took the children down and lit some candles. It was cool, so the children did not mind much. Also, I got them playing a long game of stint skin the snake. They were happy to play instead of doing schoolwork. It helped me not it helped them not think about why they were downstairs. I ran back upstairs to my father. He was leaving. I told him I was ready to go with them. I told him I knew he was more than a schoolmaster. A, a look of proud fatherhood covered his face, and he waved me to him to go. He, the soldier, and I took off bareback on our horses. I rode on the back of the horse of the, that the soldier had brought for my father. We rode our, we rode our skittish horses over, to, over the landscape, until I saw a regiment of busy soldiers preparing for march. When we arrived, someone handed me a drum. My father said, My boy, we are to defend Long Island today with General Washington. This is how I remember my brave father now, these 20 years later. He gave his life for the cause, spying for General Washington. The British caught him and hanged him for it. I watched my father utter his last words. He is remembered for those words. I only regret that I have one life to lose for my country.